beginning with the kalika chetrike we all know that kalika chetrike focuses on these topics that you see on your screens right now for the months of may june and july and these are aligned across all the grades of 4th 5th 6th and 7th grade requirements we all are here to discuss and explore the experiential activities and methods of efficiently having these selected concepts covered in this module for a start let us begin with the basic language skills reading is a receptive skill through which information or text can be received and understood for example here when the learner is introduced to the word bus he or she identifies each of the letters in the word and then associates each of them with their respective sounds and then attaches meaning to the whole word the main ingredient of learning a language is to inculcate phonemic awareness phonemic awareness is the skill of being able to hear recognize individual units of sound in a word and be able to manipulate it into new ones This is how a learner gains the skill to identify the letters by first looking at the symbol keeping this and in our mind let us watch the video again Let us see one more video now. Bad. 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 It is then that the learners gain the ability to recognize the sound of the letter and understand the change in the word as well as its meaning when the position of a letter is changed. Bad. Hope you can see this dynamics of letter and meaning change in this video. Moving forward, focusing on the phonemic awareness is one of the efficient methodologies to help a learner learn a language. The first stage of phonemic awareness is the identification of letters and their sounds. This is followed by the ability to pronounce those identified letters in the form of words which is further developed into the ability to read multiple chunks of word together which are phrases and sentences this familiarizes a learner with both the known and the unknown vocabulary of a language and hence a learner can then involve in the productive skill of writing thus leading to an effective language learning as we all know kalika chetarke is our priority for this academic year the milestones within the kalika chetarke that each learner has to go through contains word families this is a learning stage that all our learners have go through as the skaters to the foundational literacy irrespective of grades 
these milestones can be achieved with the activities we will be discussing further the activities that will be discussed further can be taken up by the teachers of grade 4 5 6 and 7 so let us start with the first step of learning and associating letters and their sounds with actions here's a video for all of you let's listen to the 26 sounds of the letters of the alphabet with actions let's start with letter a sound of letter a is a a a imagine there is an ant moving on your arm and you're making the sound a a a the next letter is b sound of letter b is b b b imagine there is a bear which is trying to hit the ball with the bat b b b the next letter is c sound of letter c is k k k imagine there is a crow going around you with the sound k k k the next letter is d sound of letter d is d d d imagine there is a dog which is hitting on the drum with the sound d d d the next letter is e sound of letter e is a a a imagine there is an elephant which is trying to call its friend with the sound a a a the next letter is f and sound of letter f is imagine there is a frog which is deflating the balloon with the sound the next letter is g sound of letter g is g g g imagine there is a girl who is gargling the water with the sound g g g the next letter is h sound of letter h is <sighs> imagine there is a horse which is very tired and making the sound <sighs> the next letter is i sound of letter i is e e e imagine there is an ink pot and ink just fell on the insect and that insect is making the sound e e e the next letter is j sound of letter j is j j j imagine there is a joker who is juggling the jelly balls with the sound j j j the next letter is k sound of letter k is k k k imagine there is a king who is trying to fly a kite with the sound k k k the next letter is l sound of letter l is l imagine there is a lion which is licking the lollipop with the sound l next letter is m sound of letter m is m mm. imagine there is a monkey which had tasty mangoes and making the sound m mm. next letter is n sound of letter n is n n n imagine there is a nurse who is saying n n n to her patient who wants to eat noodles the next letter is o sound of letter o is a imagine an ox which is trying to turn on and off the switch with the sound o o o the next letter is p sound of letter p is p p p imagine panda popping the popcorns with the sound p p p the next letter is q sound of letter q is qu 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 imagine there is a queen who had a duck and it makes a sound qu 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 the next letter is r sound of letter r is r r r imagine there is a robot which is moving with the sound r the next letter is yes sound of letter s is s imagine there is a snake which is hissing with the sound s next letter is t sound of letter t is t t t imagine tiger watching the tennis match and ball goes t t t the next letter is u sound of letter u is a a a 
Imagine there is an uncle who is trying to open an umbrella with the sound a a a. The next letter is V. Sound of letter V is V V V. Imagine you are trying to ride a van with the sound V V V. The next letter is W. Sound of letter W is V V V. Imagine there is a woman who is trying to drink the water with the sound V V V. The next letter is X. Sound of letter X is Imagine there is a fox who is trying to click a picture with the sound The next letter is Y. Sound of letter Y is Ya Ya Ya. Imagine there is a yak which is trying to eat a very yummy yogurt with the sound Ya Ya Ya. The next letter is Z. Sound of letter Z is Z. Imagine there are bees which are buzzing around a zebra with the sound Zzzz. These are the 26 sounds of the letters of the alphabet with actions. This is a technique through which the learners can easily recall and identify letters with their unique sounds. The next logical step after learning the sounds of the letters of the alphabet is to combine the letters and read them. This can be done through an activity called fishing for letters. Here, the learners build a fishing rod with a stick and a rope. The end of the rope is attached with a magnet. There are a set of letter cards or letter flash cards which can be cut out and created. A metal pin or a U-clip can be attached to each letter to make it magnetic. The learners are then asked to pick one letter from the heap of letters. For example, when A and T are fished together, ask the learner to reproduce the sound of each individual letter as in A and T and then combine together to form the word AT. If a third letter, C, is fished out of the heap of letters, it can be added to the already fished A and T, making it ca, k, a, t, cat. A more kinesthetic idea could be making the learners assume themselves as one letter each. On the teacher's cue, the learners have to group together to form two-lettered words. The teacher can then ask the learners to create a three-lettered word to which the learners can rearrange themselves to form a three-lettered word and can also be followed by a four-lettered word. The teacher can also join the learners in the fun of actions and sounds. The teacher can make use of action sounds, which we watched earlier. She or he can give two letters to the learners in the form of actions only, just like in the game of dumb charades. The same can be done for three letters as well, but as an added complexity, the letters can be given in a jumbled manner. The learners will have to not only identify the letters and but also recognize the sequence and form a meaningful word. Like here in CPA, the learners identify and rearrange the letters and figure out the word k a p cap. Uh, now we have an interactive activity by looking at the actions and sounds that I do. You all have to guess the uh, letters and rearrange them to make the meaningful word. You can uh, let us know your responses through chat box. The second one is ta ta ta. The third one is no. No, 
Now, the fourth letter is A, A, A. You all have to identify the letter first, then rearrange them to make a meaningful word. Okay, most of them are sending as sent and nest. They're also forming a three letter word as pen, net, pens. Very good. Wonderful answers. Thank you, teachers. The next logical step would be associating words with pictures. While conducting all these activities that we have been discussing, the teachers has to jot down or write down the words and letter combinations that the learners came up with throughout. The teachers then can ask the learners to associate those words on the board with the pictures in the picture chart. For example, the letter C-A-T, that is cat, can be associated with picture of cat. The teacher can bring in more picture cards for this purpose, but if the learners run out of words from the board, then they can be asked to identify the pictures directly and recognize the objects or things. Kriti, I have a challenge for you. Uh, can you narrate me your daily routine in a simple sentences? Yes, why not? But there is a rule. The rule is that you cannot use any single English word. You must use only Kannada to narrate your routine. Participants, I request you all to listen carefully and catch Kriti if she uses any English word. Nanu belage yed kodle first neer kodiktini nan day shuru agode vyayama madodrinda vyayama madlik aglilla andre dance athwa jump adru madtini wait 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 teachers did you all notice that she used many english words what are those words can you all uh, chat those words using chat box please type the words that kriti has used in her sentences nisarga our participants are saying that I have used dance, day, first, jump. Oh God, did I use all of these words? All these words are nothing but sight words. Sight words are the words that are the most frequently used and the one, ones that may or may not follow the sound and letter pattern of pronunciation that we have been discussed till now. You must be thinking if these words are so many in numbers and do not follow the sounds and letter pattern of pronunciation that we have been discussed till now, then how can we teach these words to the learners? This is where we need to utilize some communicative language teaching strategies. One such, such strategy could be short stories. Teachers can identify or create short stories with lots of sight words in them. This would be in one way of grabbing the learner's attention and increasing their interest in getting used to sight words. When it comes to choosing the stories, we need to take care of the learning levels and the grade levels of the learners too, as stories contain all sorts of literal and figurative narrations within them, which the learners might or might not be able to understand. When it comes to the actual telling part of the storytelling, we need to manage the pace of our storytelling based on the learners' reactions and their understanding. The pitch of our voice and the intonation also adds to the narrative effect and makes the emotions within the story come alive. Additionally, use of props and other materials adds to the dramatic effect of the story and overall experience of the story narration session. Let us see some transaction ideas on how we can utilize storytelling. The first idea would be take up a story and let the learners identify or find out words of interest. These words of interest could be nouns, pronouns, articles, or anything. The second idea is using the same story, you can let the learners find the information of interest. What does that mean? It could be a simple, as simple as who won the race against the tortoise in the story of the hare and the tortoise. 
next added complexity would be using the same story you can ask your learners to read the story given to them in the form of text as a chain one after the other here learners complete the story one after the other by reading one sentence taking turns added complexity to this let your learners tell the story to you do not give them any text and the learners will retell the story to you a line after line or section after section taking turns what else can we do with stories we can use the same story and let your learners argue about the actions of the characters within that story and question their decisions for or against some higher grade learners can even take up the challenge of predicting what might happen after a section so the teacher can stop telling the story at a certain point then the learners take up the story on their own use their imagination and predict what might happen next want to give more challenge to your learners challenge to their imagination could be allow your learners to complete the story on their own you do not give the definitive ending of the story and the learners complete the story on your behalf and everybody celebrates that ending of the story based on your learners imagination and techniques um misfa you know what i found a cute dog and i've named him zuzu i found him while i was walking in the morning you know what zuzu took my toy and then zuzu went to play with my neighbor's dog ruby ruby and zuzu are good friends now ruby and zuzu always play together in the mud and ruby and zuzu make me dirty as well by giving me hugs kisses and stop stop sushil that's a lot of names repeated why do you have to take their names over and over again can we use something else instead um what can i use without changing their names why don't you use pronouns pronouns are the words used instead of nouns let us play a game where we have a number of kids but we don't know any of their names but you'll have to answer my questions using pronouns instead of their names slash nouns all right i'll try who is holding the clock um i think she is who is reading the books um let me see let me see i think yes i found them they are see you didn't have to know their names to point out to them that's the magic of using pronouns another activity to understand the use of pronouns can be to ask the learners to talk about their friend where instead of using their friend's name repeatedly the learners use the respective pronoun i have another interesting idea to teach pronouns which is let us create a map and have pronoun shops at different locations and ask the learners to drop the nouns to their correct pronoun shops let's say there is a noun named nayana that the learner needs to deliver to its appropriate pronoun shop the learners must deliver the noun to she shop exactly and this can be done uh, if a male a uh, friend comes in he'll have to go to the he shop if they go together they'll have to go to the they shop and if it's an animal or a thing it has to be dropped to the it shop and so on and so forth now let us talk a little about apostrophe we all know that apostrophe is a punctuation mark used to show possession of a person or thing here is an activity to introduce apostrophes in class 
Cut out the shape of an apostrophe from a cardboard. Arrange a bunch of objects on a table. Ask each of the learners who does this object belong to. Like if teacher asks, who does this pet belong to? Then the learner has to place the cutout on the object and say, this is Priya's spectacles. Having talked about how to deal with pronouns and apostrophes, let us discuss a little about how to deal with plurality of nouns or multiple nouns. This is a magnet and this is an S magnet. Unlike the regular magnet which attracts metal, the S magnet gets attracted to multiple nouns. If you bring a single noun near to it, it does not attract the noun. But if you bring multiple nouns near it, it attracts them and creates plural of the nouns. Like an apple becomes apples. And these are the set of nouns that become plural when S is added to them. This is a creative idea through which the learners can remember which noun turns into plural when S is added to them. Similar ideas can be created and utilized for the other rules of pluralization. Now we move on to the next set of concepts, adjectives and prepositions of place. These concepts are dealt together in Kalika Chetarke exercises where colors and shapes are the elements covered under adjectives and the concepts of where and there are the elements covered under prepositions. In the classroom, the teacher can identify images which have lots of colorful shapes and objects in them and allow the learners to answer to the questions of where is something. So here the teacher can ask where is a blue triangle. The learner can point at the blue triangle within the image and say here is the blue triangle. The teacher can further ask where are the grey rectangles to which the learner can again point at the image and say, here are the gray rectangles. Another transaction idea to let the learners engage with the concept of adjective is the game of 20 questions. Here, one learner think of an object and all other learners ask him series of yes or no questions like, is it big? Is it red? Is it square? Etc. To find out the object which is in mind of a learner within the limit of 20 questions.